Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Skyrim Plus. Today I'm featuring Providence, a settlement mod originally created by Gary62 for LE and converted to special edition by Shante Jade. Let's check out the map. Here we are at Providence. We're near Iverstead, Nilheim, Trevis Watch, the ruins of Bethalft, the Alchemist Shack, and here we are again at our featured settlement, Providence. For those of you that appreciate a world space view, there's Iverstead. And as we turn to the right, we can see Nilheim at the back of the Trevor River. And in the background, you can see Trevor's Watch. And there's the ruins of Bethalft. And as we look down and to the left, we can see our featured settlement of the day, Providence. Let's drop down and take a closer look. It looks like we landed right by a road sign. Okay, as we head towards Iverstead from this road sign, we find a shield. And on the shield, we have a couple of notes with some backstory. One of the notes is for if your player is already recognized as the Dragonborn, and the other is if you haven't done that yet. We'll read the uninvited first. If you are a wary traveler, rest yourself here a while and welcome. If a thief or a scoundrel, be warned. Depart now before the wrath of Zaya descends on you. Followers of the Dragonborn. And now we'll go back and check out the Dragonborn version. As you have discovered provenance, I will assume that you probably heard of those who assembled here and built this place nearly a year ago. That no one is likely here to greet you is unfortunate, but many had to return to their homes. Only one mare in the pasture has stayed throughout. In fact, was here before we ever arrived. She's a bit odd, that one. Just waits there. Won't let anyone ride her or lead her off. Put more than one on their back that tried. I continue to check on the place, feed Zaya, and bring in occasional supplies, but I don't know how long I can do this and not draw attention to myself. Please, accept this as your home. Quarters have been set in your honor in hopes that you will, for we do honor you. A dragonborn in our age? It's a miracle unto itself. We are poor people, Dovahkiin, many of us slaves, but we are strong and proud people as well. We only require the inspiration and leadership that you could in your wisdom provide to stand a chance against the forces aligned against us and against the unification of a free Skyrim. One of your many friends, Theron. 30th of Last Seed, 4th Era, 203. On my last visit. I discovered two new occupants, both had heard the rumors and made long journeys to be here. On in years and both outcasts in their own right. Geronda is an orc, blacksmith by trade, and will use our smithy to attend to our meager armory. The Dark One, though nearly blind, is still a powerful ally, with his long-acquired knowledge of the arcane. He likes to keep to himself mostly, and wants to convert the empty supply tent and the yard for his use. I saw no harm in it. Between the three now, I feel Providence is in safe keeping until your arrival. Okay, now that we know the location and the backstory, let's check this place out. We'll back up a little to take a look at the first building, and it's looking pretty large. I love that the settlement is surrounded by aspen trees. Personally, I have the mod Aspen's Ablaze installed. We're not ready to go into the building quite yet, we're going to go and check around the yard. And to the left you have a wood chopping block, look at that hanging light. And as we continue, you can see that we have a gate for the horse. This must be Zaya. I wonder if they're trying to imply that she killed this bear. I guess she has a reputation. We'll come back at the end of the tour and check her out more. But for now, we have a settlement to explore. Here's Zaya's water supply. And then we have a little side yard. And this structure kind of reminds me of what you would see a chicken's nest in, but I don't see a nest or any chickens. Now that we've seen the side yard, let's go back out front. We're going to save this main building for the last. To the right, you've got some cool decoration, a parked carriage. Oh, and here's the dark one. Let's see what he's up to. Azur yes. It looks like he sells some things. So you wish to master the arcane arts. Okay, so he would sell what a typical wizard would. Some robes, some scrolls, some spell tomes, and some soul gems. 
and he can be a follower. Mm-hmm. In his area, he's got a little fire going. There's a chair to sit and enjoy it. There's a tanning rack to the left. Yes. It looks like there's a wood chopping block with some blood on it to the right. And there's a table to clean your meat. And then over here, this is kind of romantic. You have a double outhouse. Couldn't you imagine you and your honey using the bathroom together there, writing each other love notes? It even has a little light so you don't stub your toe at night. There's a little hole in the side gate, so if you want a different entry or exit point, you have a chance to. And you can see the well for the community right in front of us. And as we turn to the right, you can see the Dark One shop. That looks pretty ominous with that skull and bones. You have a light to the left and a shrine of Talos to the right. And when we pass under the curtain, he's there waiting. He got there pretty quickly. There's some kind of a creepy looking mark on his table. It looks like he's got some torch bugs captured in a jar. There are a ton of those here at nighttime. And then there's his arcane enchanter. And you can use that as well. And then there's his bed, and you have name storage for staves right by his bed. That pretty much sums up his tent. Let's see what we can find next. Once we pass the well, we find the blacksmith's area. Look at the antlers mounted above, and look at all of those lanterns. Those look great. You have a metal blacksmith shop sign to the right, and it looks like she's hunted a wolf down to make some leather. And there she is to the right. Corinda will sell you things a blacksmith typically would. You can ask her about orc strongholds. If you have anniversary edition, you can ask her to armor your horse, or she can become your follower. You have tons of options. If you remember correctly, the tanning rack was back by the fire. She's currently working at the anvil. And as we take a spin around, we'll find the grindstone right there. And we have a custom chest, a light for night, and then there's our workbench. So to complete the suite, we just need a smelter. And once we head up this hill, guess what we're gonna find? If you set a smelter, you're right. It looks like you also have a chair to enjoy nature some more decoration, another light source. And now we're ready to head back down the hill. So we've seen that this home so far has included an arcane enchanter and a full smithing suite. Here's another wood chopping block. We've seen several so far. You can see a little bow and arrow set up to the right. And there are some training dummies that you can practice with straight ahead. And I just wanted to show you that there's nothing back here. That's the back gate to the side yard that we saw at the very beginning. So we're ready to head into the main building now. And I think this is the shortest way to get there. So we're going to head this way. And it's nice to get a glimpse of all of the things that you've already seen. And just like everything else in this settlement so far, this building is also no load door. So you have a whole settlement that's no load door. That's great. And as we enter, we come into a grand throne room. Look at the lighting in here. Looks fantastic. And as we head to the right, we have some mead barrels. Here's a table for food storage. You've got a cooking pot on the table. More food on those shelves. And that mortar and pestle right there is your alchemy lab. You also have a few free potions you can collect. Here are some harvestable ingredients. And the home has several of these shutters that you can open and get some natural light and some fresh air. Look at all of those candles. There are some tables for your followers to eat. And they're right next to a bonfire, so that will keep you nice and warm. And then to the right, you have one bed that's unoccupied that you can give to a follower. And the other one is for your orc blacksmith. Speaking of the blacksmith, when you open up the shutter, you can see the antlers from her shop, and you can tell that's her bed with all of the orc armor right by it. And as you turn to the right, this door takes you straight out to the blacksmith area, so that's quicker to get there than going out the front door. There's your throne room again. Here's a closer look. 
You have a little bonfire over here with two chairs so you can sit and talk with a follower or they can talk to each other. And to the right of that, it looks like you have an area to show off your valuables. Here are two more beds for your followers and another shutter that you can open. And then next to that, you have another two bed rolls for your followers and another two beds as well. So that's two bed rolls and then four beds is six, plus another empty bed was seven, plus the orcs bed makes eight. And the dark one can be a follower and he has his own cot in that tent, so that's nine. So you can have a pretty sizable following with you. Now we've entered the armory area with name storage for shields in the bottom and a weapons plaque above it. There's a weapons rack for three right next to that. You have some loose weapons you can take and that sword on the wooden box is name storage for weapons. And then to the left, it looks like you have two empty slots on that weapons rack as well. And then we have this little ladder leading up to hay above your door, but it doesn't really function. It's just for decoration. Now that we're back to the front, you may be thinking, well, where are my quarters? Well, since you guys have been patient, I guess I'll show you now. So head up the stairs by the thrones and there's actually an opening behind it to the left. And check out this area. You've got some nice candle lighting, a table for two. Looks romantic with that flower pot. And then next to that, you have a display case and the Skyrim symbol above that. And then here's another one of those shutters that you can open. Personally, I think I would leave these open all of the time. I love the natural light and there's storage for scrolls and books. There's also a custom chest to the right and a bench. As we head down the stairs, it looks like we have a wardrobe to the right and a dresser to the left, as well as a nice candelabra. And then here's a jewelry box and a gold necklace. And then check out this incredibly cozy bedroom. You've got pillows all over the place, furs on the ground, a brazier. Here's a double bed. You have some more shutters that you can open. And I'd like to pay a huge compliment to the person that designed this lighting. Speaking of lighting, I'm going to show you several lighting activators around the home. First, when you're in the main hall, you can toggle the lights by activating the torch to the right when you first walk inside. Next, in the smithing area, the lights on the hill going to the smelter can be toggled on and off by the torch to the left. The bonfire at the front of the home has its own activator on the logs of the fire. And the outhouse has a toggleable light too. When in the bedroom, you can toggle the brazier on and off as well. And if you want to turn the candles on and off, if you turn and go up the stairs, you can use the candle to your right to extinguish or light your candles. There are other activators besides lighting ones too. In the kitchen, you may have noticed that the cooking pot wasn't above the fire. Well, if you activate the cabinet with the plates, it will set the dining table and the cooking pot. See, look, there's no more cooking pot because it's set above this fire and there are the plates on the tables. And once you've done that, a ladle will appear and if you activate that, it will set food on your table. There's also an activator to unpack your carriage. And remember this initial barrier in the front with the notes with the backstory? Once you've read those, you can come over here and activate this similar barrier. And that clears your front gate entrance. Okay, now that we've seen the main features of the settlement, we're going to go try to ride that horse, Zaya, one more time. It's been said that she's given everyone a difficult time that's tried to mount her. Let's see if we can mount her. 
And what do you know? Zaya trusts the Dragonborn. Let's ride her into Iverstead and show off to everyone. But as far as our journey is concerned, we've seen all of the features at the home now, so it's time for final thoughts. Providence is a quaint, no-load-door settlement near Iverstead that has many attractive features. You have all expected crafting with your smithing stations, arcane enchanter, mortar and pestle for alchemy, and a wood chopping block for your firewood needs. You have a cooking pot for your cooking needs. You have space for two followers from the mod and seven or eight additional followers depending on how you use your double bed. I really enjoy the lighting in this mod and hearing the backstory and being able to open the shutters. And having vendors close by is a benefit for sure. And you even get a free horse, Zaya. I really enjoyed adding this place to my load order and I hope you enjoyed it too. This concludes our feature of Providence. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and leave a comment with your thoughts. To see more of my past tours, click the playlist on the top left. To see my future content, click the channel icon on the bottom left to subscribe. And to never miss an episode, click the bell icon to receive notifications of when I post. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next episode.